Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our apprenticeship clinic. Lucy and I are delighted that you've been able to join us today as we guide you through what an apprenticeship is and how you can go about applying for one. And hopefully we'll have a chance at the end of our session to pick up on any questions that you might have. So you can use the Q&A function to ask those questions. And maybe just to get us going in that respect, it would be great to hear in the Q&A just what you're hoping to get from today's session. So maybe you can just type that into the Q&A function now, and then we'll look forward to, to having some more uh, comments come through and we'll pick those up as we go through. Really, folks are, are keen to get a clear overview of what apprenticeships can offer, uh, what those op options are post GCSEs, learning about the, uh, the process of, of applying. Um, so that's good. We can, we can definitely cover that today. Um, a question, why should we choose Work Plus? Well, hopefully that will become abundantly clear over the next session. And also looking about how to structure that application. What should I put in into my application? And that's a great start. Um, so please continue to use the Q&A to ask any questions right throughout the session and we'll gather those up at the end. So let's have a think, first of all. There's a, there's a very uh, diverse mix um, of, of attendees here today. Some are parents, some are uh, advising young people, some are teachers, some are applicants, and some are maybe just not sure. Um, so we've got a real mixture. Let's think about the way we've, we've, we've left um, school in the past. What ways have we done that to get into work? So some folks are leaving directly after GCSEs and going straight into work that way. Some maybe go on to an FE college after that to continue their learning before they enter the world of work. Some stay on the A levels and then go on to an FE college course. And then others will go on to university. And even there are conversion programs after university to help you find the right job for you. So there are a variety of different ways that in the past, in a, in a pre-apprenticeship world, that we've made that transition between school and work. And once we think about the transition between school and work, apprenticeships are also open to those who are career changers. And we'll think a bit more about the eligibility as we go through today's session. Now, over the last few months, we picked up on a couple of headlines. So the first on the left is that in the last year, there's been a 60% increase in the number of first year students at university dropping out of their courses. Now, a lot of that had to do with grade inflation, but there's also a significant number that are just finding that university full time is not the right choice for them. At the same time, in the middle diagram, you can see that unemployment is incredibly low. Employers are really struggling to find the right people to come and join in their organizations to help them grow their business and provide brilliant products and services for their customers. And then on the right hand side, we have a survey of employers from across the world carried out by the World Economic Forum. And it identifies not that people need to have X grade and GCSE maths or English, but actually it's these 10 skills that are going to be the most useful for all our citizens to have in our more digitized economy. Things like analytical thinking, problem solving, creativity, the use of technology and social influence. So how can we help our young people and career changers to consider those aspects whenever they're coming to apply for an apprenticeship. You may not be familiar with the qualification levels on the left hand side. I certainly wasn't until a few years ago, but it's a common way of describing the different qualification levels. So we understand D GCSEs, D to G, A star to C and, a and then A levels. They're at level one, two and three respectively. But you can also do courses at college or private providers at those levels as well, which are equivalent to GCSEs, A-levels, etc. You can then go on at a college to do foundation degree or HNC, HND, as it's sometimes called, and then also go on to a degree program either after that foundation degree or directly from your level three qualification at A-levels. 
and on to master's and PhD levels, um, if that's the path that you're taking. So those are the qualification levels that are out there. Now, I, I'd like to give you a little bit of a teaser. It's end of a Monday, okay? We've maybe had a, a pretty busy day. I'd like you to have a look at the screen and take maybe 15 seconds and type into the Q&A what you think you see on the screen. And let's see if, if we have any ideas coming from the audience. I was given two minutes at a recent course to look at this and I have no idea what was on the screen. So I'm hoping that there are greater minds than mine in the audience. So I can see a panda with a lovely panda emoji coming through. Brilliant. Great. Yes, black and white um, spots. Yeah, it could, could be a panda. Any other ideas? So someone else is a lion facing right. Okay, that's that's very specific, but yeah, good guess. Another one says, is a map of Northern Ireland? Um, good one, good one. A person looking up, a giraffe. Yep, I suppose all those patterns do look maybe like a giraffe's uh, skin. Let's have another look. Did anyone see the, the cowboy on the horseback? I certainly didn't the first time I saw it. But once you jump back to the previous image, it, I guess it's really hard to unsee it now, isn't it? It's hard to unsee something which was hidden from view until a few seconds before. So we hope that today's session will be a chance for you to think about apprenticeships in a way that you've maybe never thought about them before. So let's take a look deeper in. So what is an apprenticeship? Well, first and foremost, it's a job. It's not just a training course that you go on with a bit of work experience. It's a job. You get paid a salary to be an apprentice and that will vary depending on the company and the sector the different levels that are available but some of our apprentices are starting in salaries in the low twenty thousand. so these are real jobs with real employers the split is generally four days in work and one day in that off the job training some maybe one and a half days in off the job training but as a rule it's mostly uh, four days and one day split so regardless of whether you're a lower and lower level apprenticeship or a higher level apprenticeship, someone of any age doing a higher level apprenticeship, you avoid student fees. You don't pay the college or the university anything and you get paid that salary. The government takes care of all the fees. And also you receive dedicated mentoring within the organization because you're their employee, you're their future talent. They want to bring you in and help you uh, become a really a key member of their team. So when we thought about the qualification levels a few moments ago, this is what the apprenticeship system looks like when it's overlaid on top. So clearly you don't do apprenticeships at school, GCSEs, A levels, but you can see on the right hand side the, the red or the sorry the, the green dotted area are what are the more traditional apprenticeship areas at level two and level three. And those would be typical, typically like plumbing, carpentry, hair and beauty. But business administration, they're even a civil engineering apprenticeship at level three. There are over 100 different pathways in those areas. And then the higher level apprenticeships, there's a smaller number of those, but that means that you can go right to degree level as an apprentice. Now, we put the diagram right up the PhD level. There aren't any at that level just yet, but you can go as high as a master's with the current apprenticeships that are out there. So let's have a think about who apprentices are. So this is Daniel Wark. Daniel is from Hollywood and went to Priory Integrated College. And Daniel is doing an apprenticeship, as you can probably see, hopefully from the blurred background, with the ICC, which is the Waterfront Hall and the um, the, the Ulster Hall um, on Bedford Street in Belfast. And Daniel is having a great time. He's enjoying his work. He's getting paid to go to work. He also gets a lot of free uh, gig uh, tickets as well. So that's a real perk for him working there. And also he gets to go to Ulster University one day a week to do a degree apprenticeship in customer operations. So Daniel's having a great time. This is Olivia. So Olivia and her twin sister, Louisa, are apprentices with a startup business called Kairos. It does sports scheduling um, for elite teams across the world. And it was founded by Andrew Trimble, former professional rugby player, and Gareth Quinn. And they had a team of about 16, 17 this time last year. 
but they brought in four apprentices, of which Olivia is one. And she and her twin sister were deputy head girls at Grosvenor Grammar School in East Belfast. And now they are going to university as apprentices. So they're getting their degree. But more importantly, they're helping to build this brilliant product which can be used by elite sports teams across the world. They've got a reason to get up in the morning to do real life projects. And on the right is Jane McMonagall. Jane is originally from Derry and went to Thornhill College. Jane was doing her AS levels at Thornhill, um, but realised that really she'd be better suited going to Northwest Regional College to do a BTEC qualification. And after she did that, she then progressed on to an apprenticeship in civil engineering. And on the left is her dad, Vincent. And we recently spoke to him at our Meet the Parents events. It was last year. And we've got another one of those happening tomorrow at 4.30. And Vincent said this. He said, Jane is thriving in what she's doing. I couldn't be happier for her. And it's lovely to hear that coming through, that apprentices are having the time of their lives and their parents are delighted for them. We have a whole YouTube channel of more stories like that. And we'd really encourage you to go there and, and find out more as you hear from parents, from apprentices and employers about the difference that apprenticeships are making to our organi their organisations. So just like our image at the very start, hopefully you're looking at that screen now and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, that's a cowboy on a horse. And we hope that this, this afternoon session will be a time where you can come away and have a better view of apprenticeships across Northern Ireland. So how does work plus work? Well, why, why are we doing what we're doing? Uh, one of the questions earlier was, how, how can you help me? Well, if you're looking for an apprenticeship, it's like you're looking for lights to turn on. One company is looking for someone and then your careers teacher maybe tells you about it and you make the deadline and that's great. So you've done all that information, you've added in all your um, qualifications and your jobs, uh, your, your job profiles, your work experience, et cetera. And then a couple of weeks later, another one pops up, uh, but your career teacher doesn't tell you until the last minute because they didn't get the email, they missed it, it was in their spam and you miss out on that one. Oh, and then that one goes and then there's maybe another one and another one comes. It can be a really busy time applying for lots of different apprenticeships with those organizations. So what we've done at Work Plus is to try and make it easier for you to apply. So rather than having single individual light bulbs flashing, we want to bring them together. We're acting more like a floodlight so that we can make your life a lot easier and make the light brighter by having all those businesses and their opportunities in one place at one time. So that's the opportunity that we present to you. So that's a bit about apprenticeships and what we do at Work Plus. I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Lucy Marshall, who's our community manager. And Lucy will take a look a bit more in depth at our website, where you can find out more information about apprenticeships, the opportunities, and then she'll also take you through the application process. And do continue to add your questions into the Q&A, and we'll pick those up in the Q&A session as we come to a close. Um, Lucy, I'll hand over to you now. Thank you. Great. Um, it is great to be with you guys um, this afternoon on this webinar, and I'm really excited to be walking through the application process um, for applying to an apprenticeship through Work Plus. Um, we're delighted that applications are currently open, so we're um, nearing the end of our application campaign that runs from January to February. Um, there is a smaller campaign in August time, um, but it's it's a lot shorter, um, so we'd really recommend you getting your application in now if you'd like to start an apprenticeship around September time of this year. Um, so I'm just going to walk through for the next 10, 15 minutes or so what an, um, the Work Plus application looks like and what you can expect and um, how you can make the most of your application. Um, and then at the end, we'll finish with a time for, for Q&A. Um, so hopefully you're familiar with the campaign dates um, for this session. Um, we have opened applications on the 16th of January and then we um, will have the deadline for applications. So all applications must be in and completed um, by the 24th of February. And the deadline's at 1pm, so do make sure that you get your application in before then. Um, after, after the end of February, it's over to employers. So 
They'll be looking through the applications that they've received for their job opportunities. They'll be shortlisting applicants. And if you've been successful at the shortlisting stage, they will invite you for interview. So you'll want to be, be near your phone um, over those, those few weeks, kind of the end of February, start of March, um, if you hear from an employer. And um, then there'll be the interview um, process. Um, so again, if you've been successful, you might be invited to an interview with the employer. And um, that might be happening online, it might be virtual or you might be invited to an office open day with that employer as well. There's a whole variety of interviewing um, techniques that are used um, over those weeks. And the good news is, is if, if you've been successful in this campaign for your apprenticeship application, you might have a job opportunity by the end of March. Um, and we think it would be so great, so worthwhile for you going in maybe your last few weeks of school, knowing where you're going from September time, knowing that you have a job offer and um, that you're able to start earning an income, you're able to continue your studies um, as an apprentice. Um, so what do the opportunities look like on offer at the minute? Um, well, our opportunities are all live on our website. You can head to workplus.app um, to explore the 132 different opportunities on offer. And um, we also have a few more opportunities that will hopefully be added in the coming days and um, with some other companies um, getting on board. Um, but don't worry, you won't miss those. You'll get an, an email to say um, that those have been added. Um, you can filter the different opportunities by sector or by level. And Richard broke down the different levels of apprenticeship so you can figure out which apprenticeship level is right for you and the qualifications that you have already. Um, you can also filter the opportunities in a map view. Um, so maybe you're keen to stay at home and you'd like to go to a job that is nearby you, um, nearby your home, or maybe you'd like to move um, to Belfast and live with friends. Um, and then you can explore different job opportunities that might um, be, be local to you as well or that you can get to. Um, to use one of our opportunities as an example then for this application process, I'm, I'm going to use this business analyst apprentice opportunity with 3173. Um, they're an employer who's just joined WorkPlus um, this year and they have several different opportunities. Um, when you're viewing the opportunity, you can see information about applying to the job and then you can also see information about applying to the course. Um, it's really important that you note that there's two different application processes for an apprenticeship. You must apply to the job and you also must apply to the course. Um, we give you all the information on the opportunity of where you can apply to the course and that is typically through that um, particular training provider's own website. So you're applying directly on their website. Um, so, for example, for this opportunity, the course is delivered at Ulster University, where you can work towards your degree as an apprentice. Um, you'll find information about module information, about the eligibility, and um, all the information that you need to see is to check, is this the right course for you? Are you eligible for this apprenticeship? Do you have the grades or the subjects, or will you have the grades and the subjects that you need to begin this course um, come September time when the course begins? Um, what you can do then is if, if you realize, yes, you're eligible, yes, this is what you want to do next year, um, then you can click that blue box that says apply to course, um, and that will take you through to Ulster University's website where you can directly apply for this course. It's really important that you do that alongside your WorkPlus application so that you um, avoid disappointment of and ensure that you can try and get a place on that particular training provider course. And so all the information that you need should be on the WorkPlus opportunity on the website. Um, so then to go back to the apply to job tab of the particular opportunity, um, you will find lots of information that the employers uploaded um, about the type of person that they're looking to do this role. And um, this is the particular job that they have in their business and they would like you to apply for it um, if you're suited to the role. Um, you'll see um, there's a job description outline and um, the people that they're looking for as well in the person spec. And um, maybe as you read through that, you think, oh, yeah, that could be a really good fit for me. Um, I am that kind of person that would really match my interests or what I'm passionate about. Um, I would like to grow in skills areas um, in this, this particular um, 
sector in this particular company and um, have a think as you're reading through these is this suited to you and your interests and what you enjoy doing ultimately um, you'll also see that some employers set criteria for the grades as well um, as the, the training provider. So again, it's really worthwhile checking, are you eligible for this particular course? Um, if you've decided that, yes, this is the particular opportunity for you, or you've explored the 131 other opportunities and you've realized which ones you'd like to apply to, then you'll want to head um, to the WorkPlus website to find out more um, and apply um, to the, the login portal. Um, so you'll find the login portal um, on the top right of the, the WorkPlus website um, and enter your email address. Um, I think it's really nice that we've got a pin code password um, so that you're not having to remember another password um, for a login um, information or portal. Um, so what you'll do is you'll head to your email account and enter in the pin code that you've received to your, your email address. Um, this dashboard will help you navigate um, your WorkPlus application. On the left hand side on the tab, you can see that there's a profile section as well as application section and um, you can navigate your stage of the application on the dashboard and make sure that you have um, submitted and completed your application or if you've created multiple applications to multiple different types of apprenticeships, you can track your progress on the dashboard. Um, you'll also see there that there's a bit of information if you require extra support and um, you can contact Disability Action and they can help you with your application and um, just make sure that you contact them at least four days before the deadline for WorkPlus applications on the 24th of February. Um, so if you're ready to start your application, um, we break down at the beginning of the application what is included and what um, information you will need to answer in the or provide in the, the application process. Um, so maybe you want to kind of get to this point of the application and then print off the questions. Um, maybe you might want to have a working Word document or a Google document where you're thinking through what answers you could include, what examples you could use um, for particular questions, as well as maybe asking a careers teacher or a parent or a friend for help. Um, I know that sometimes it can be a lot easier when you've got um, someone telling you about particular things that you enjoy doing or you're involved in or the skills that you have. Um, and it can be quite hard to think of those yourself um, so definitely have a think with other people ask for their advice and um, ask them to to read over your application towards the end um, but yeah at, at the beginning of your application um, you'll get a bit of a heads up of what uh, questions are included and what you might want to think through before you begin your application You'll see there that there's three different bullet points um, at the top of, of this slide. Um, those three different bullet points, again, outline the different parts of the WorkPlus application. You've got your profile part, which is the first um, part of the application, and that's where you're um, being asked about your contact information, your qualifications, the subjects that you're studying or that you studied, and um, you're asking about work being asked about work experience and um, you're being asked about some of these lengthier questions as well that you're getting a heads up for at the beginning and um, that's all included in the first part of your application and um, the middle bullet point there is your application to the apprenticeships that you're applying to to the jobs that you're applying to and um, so you can do multiple different applications um, and you can um, tailor a question um, to the specific apprenticeship types that you're applying to. The final part of the, the WorkPlus application is the aptitude test. This is optional, but we really recommend that you complete it. And it's just a short um, aptitude test, kind of personality-based um, assessment that you can complete online. And you might even enjoy doing it as well. Um, it only takes about 35 minutes and it's really worthwhile doing this um, because it gives employers another chance to see um, what kind of person you are, what skills you have, um, and another way to, to see that that's not just a written communication application form. So moving on to um, that kind of going into a bit more detail of that first bullet point, the profile section of your WorkPlus application. 
Again, you've got these um, questions that you'll be asked later on. Um, but to start with, um, it's all about, about you and your contact information. Um, so hopefully that's quite straightforward, filling in your contact information um, and then completing that first section. Um, this slide contains the, the qualifications um, that we're asking for. So um, you'll see there are some, some steps, um, some advice as you're typing in your qualifications to the search bar. Um, again, a reminder to make sure that you're eligible for the apprenticeship that you want to apply to. Um, we recommend that you can type in the, the level of the qualification first, followed by the subject, and then you'll get a drop down of some different um, search results. And then you just select the one that applies to the, the qualification that you have um, that is correct for you. Um, you'll also see there that you get to put in your, your grade and the school that you completed your qualification at or the um, the, the training body and then also the, the date that it was awarded. You'll see there for this example of this GCSE maths qualification, um, there's a future date there that's been entered to so 2023. And that just means that if you're waiting to sit your exams this May or June time, enter the date in the future that you'll be completing it. Um, and that means that it's a predicted grade. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, once you've added all your qualifications, um, you'll be able to get kind of a preview list of them all and just make sure that they're correct. Um, and then you'll be moving on to the work experience section of your application. Um, so that's where you can tell employers about the work experience that you have. Um, you might want to think about um, the particular opportunities you enjoy doing and how that's led to you now choosing to do an apprenticeship. Um, but you can include all the different work experience um, opportunities that you have from part-time jobs to um, work experience placements. Um, so um, enter that um, in, in this section of your, your part-time jobs or the experience that you have at work. Then once you've completed this, um, you can move on to the, the next questions, which are these um, 150 word answer questions. Um, and this is a really great opportunity for you to communicate and um, what you enjoy doing, the skills that you have um, and why you'd like to do an apprenticeship. Um, questions range from examples of when you were in a team to when you managed your time well. Um, other examples as well include stressful situations. Um, again, you want to get, get behind the skills that you have um, that would make you a great candidate for this apprenticeship, for this job that you're applying to. Um, so we really recommend that you don't just um, type in something that says, oh, it was stressful when I completed my exams. Um, but get behind the why. Why was it stressful? And um, why get yeah, give more information of how you um, dealt with that situation and um, how you show skills um, that they like that the employer be interested in, in hearing more from you um, and asking you questions about that maybe in the interview as well. Um, we'd recommend that you head to the job um, description as well. Have a look at the detail that was in the job description of the apprenticeship type that you're applying to and pick out some of the, the key terms that they use in the job description and see if you can fit those into your, your answers in the, the application. And um, again, you're getting behind the why. Um, you're getting behind um, how you responded to particular situations or how you made a unique difference in a particular situation situation um, and how your skills really helped in, in whatever that situation is that you're explaining and um, think about what you could talk about that's not just um, a common thing across different apprenticeship applications um, it is a competitive process and so be thinking about be be asking your careers teacher be asking um, parents or carers for help of examples and situations that you've been in that um, would really set you apart and, and show um, that there's there's something interesting about this applicant um, and as an employer that person who's reading over your application form will want to talk to you. Um, it's great that employers are going to be the ones reading your application and the people that you're going to be working with, they'll be the ones that have read your application. Um, so it's a really great opportunity for you to communicate um, what you're interested in and how you'd be a good fit for the particular role. Um, once you've completed those questions, um, you can move on to the, the next 
few questions um, that are just kind of yes or no questions, as well as um, a quick question about how you heard about Work Plus. And we also include a monitoring question and um, community background and a declaration as well, where you just need to, to tick the box if you agree with the statement. Um, once that's complete, you'll be through to the dashboard again. Um, and that means that you've completed the My Profile, that first um, bullet point. Um, you've completed the My Profile part of your application. Um, and then it'll be onto the middle bullet point that was applying to the apprenticeship applications. Um, so these are the particular apprenticeships that you want to apply to. Um, so how we do that at Work Plus is we get you to select the particular apprenticeship um, pathway that you're interested in, you'll see a big long list of the different apprenticeships. And again, you can see these on the the app, um, the particular opportunity on the Work Plus website. Um, so as an example, if I was to select software and computing at level five to six, so that's where I'm wanting to work towards foundation degree or bachelor's degree, um, I will select the particular opportunity, um, which for example, um, at IDOX, they're offering an apprenticeship role in this um, opportunity. And then the next part of the application takes you through to ranking the different employers. Um, so these are all the employers that are offering an apprenticeship at this particular level and pathway. Um, the employers will be seeing the ranking that you've placed them in. So um, do you have a think about which employers you'd like to rank first or which employers you maybe want to remove from your list um, if you, you don't want to apply to that particular job? Um, so then after you've done that, um, you can um, select the boxes beside the training providers that you've applied to. So remember, that's a separate application to the training providers. Um, you must apply to both the training provider and the job opportunity, which you can do through Work Plus. Um, this is the question that I mentioned earlier, where you're applying um, or you're able to kind of tailor your answer to the particular apprenticeship that you're applying to. Um, so depending on what apprenticeship pathway you're applying to, that employer will see um, a different answer um, in, this, in this box. Um, again, you want to get at um, the detail of why you would be a good fit for an apprenticeship and why you're keen to um, make a difference through um, earning and learning at the same time um, in a company where you're ready to work and have a good routine and um, get on with things, get a head start in your career. Um, employers don't just want to read um, that I, I want to start this apprenticeship because I think I'm great. No, they want to see more about the skills that you have and why your your interests and what you've done and um, with your work experience opportunities maybe or your your part-time job how that is complemented the particular apprenticeship that you'd like to apply to um then um once you've completed that you'll get a lovely thank you message on the screen um well done you've completed um your application and um, then you'll visit the dashboard and um, which will take you through to um the, the platform to apply to the particular or to, um, to finalize your aptitude test. So that's where you're um, completing your aptitude test, your personality based assessment, which is giving employers another layer, another flavor of who you are as an individual and as a person and why they might like to hire you. Um, so what you'll get on your screen is you'll get a little yellow box that says take suitability assessment um, and that'll take you through to preview and um, which is where you'll complete your um, aptitude test. You'll get a short um, preview um, or short kind of practice um, of what that particular aptitude test will be like um, and that's a good chance to just kind of familiarize yourself with the process. Um, and then once you've completed that, you can see your application has been completed and um, you can download your application at any stage um, and you can print off your, your application. You can get somebody to check over it, to look for spelling mistakes, to check that you've um, got cap capital letters where capital letters are supposed to be and um, to just check your, your grammar or to maybe think through how you could make your application even better and um, remembering that it is a competitive process. Um, so it's really worthwhile if you printing off your, your application and, and passing that on to somebody else to have a look at for you. Um, but then that's you finished. That is the end of your, um, your Work Plus apprenticeship. 
And um, remember the deadline to apply is the 24th of February. So make sure that, yes, you finish your Work Plus apprenticeship application by the end of, of or by 1 p.m. on the 24th of February. And um, hopefully that's been helpful. I'm um, walking you through what the application process looks like and a few and um, maybe tips there to um, take on board as you complete your application. Again, we really recommend that you ask somebody for help as you're doing this, that you get somebody to check over and um, give you some advice as to how you can make your application for Work Plus even better. Um, now we're going to um, have a time for questions. So thank you for sending through um, your questions. Um, it's great to see those coming through. Um, what we'll do is I will um, ask Richard the questions and then um, he'll, yeah, he'll answer those for us. So um, let's see, we'll start with um, this question. So there's a question that's through that's asking if placements are predominantly in the Belfast area or across Northern Ireland. Okay, let's see. That's that's great. So, uh, we've introduced that map function this year on the Explorer on our website to to help applicants think through where the the opportunities are. So the the majority of opportunities would be within the Greater Belfast area. However, we do have some which are slightly further out, and um, up into Carrick and Ballymena, up into Tomb. And then also a bit further up into the northwest in the Corian area as well with with Northstone. So there is a there's a good good spread. Um, and we also you know know that it might be that you want to stay closer to home. So hopefully the map function will will allow you to be able to to filter on that basis. Great. Um, we have a question from Tim who's asking how to best prepare for the interview. Yeah, so an interview is about people talking to people, Tim. So that you've got to bear that in mind, um, that you're going to be in front of people who want to see your personality come out in that interview. They'll already have seen your written submission of your application form. So you've already told them quite a lot about yourself and, and given them examples of where you've done X, Y, and Z. They'll, they'll want to hear that from you, though. Um, and they'll want to see um, a bit of light in your eyes, a smile on your face as you do it to, to, to show them that that you're really excited about this opportunity to come and work with them. I, I would always encourage you to, to do some some work on the companies, even before the application is, goes in, because you'll want to try and bring out some of the things that the company is doing. Um, and if you do get to an interview, definitely do your research on and it's very easy to do that now because if you just go to the company's LinkedIn profile, you'll be able to see what they're posting and you'll you'll get a sense of what's important to that company. And if that aligns with your values and, and the things that you um, are encouraged about and, and want to be involved in, you, you can bring that out in an interview. You can say, oh, I, by the way, I saw that you were doing an, an initiative with a mental health charity uh, recently. That's fantastic. I, I think that's a brilliant initiative. I was involved with X, Y, and Z. So you have an unbelievable amount of access to information. It's not just in a black box. So make sure that you make the most of the social media profiles of those businesses in addition to their website to get a better feel for the business before you walk into the room. Great. Um, thank you. Um, there is a similar question from Joshua there, but I think that that's all been covered. So great. Um, someone else is asking, is it possible to see the aptitude test result? Unfortunately, not at this stage, although we have had quite a few applicants ask about this. So it's certainly something that we can consider. But the aptitude test is, is more for the employers to get a better sense of your suitability for their particular apprenticeship. But um, I, I always, you know, it, it would be interesting, I, I guess, to, to know that score. So it's something that we can look at making available to you as applicants as you go through for the next round of, of applications in August. Thanks. Great. Um, then to kind of group together a couple of questions about applying to courses or different levels. There's a question about someone who's applied um, to the mechanical manufacturing course through MEGA. Um, can they also apply for the same course through Work Plus? And then there's another question about um, someone who, let's see, oh, I think it's maybe, B. oh yes, there we go, um, about someone who's a kind of 
currently in year 12 sitting GCSEs um, this June and do they apply for level two or level three is their next step after their GCSEs? Yeah, okay, so taking the first one first. So um, we mentioned earlier about how Work Plus brings together employers, but it's not every employer that we're, we're working with. We know that other employers will do their own recruitment and some may rely on the college to do the recruitment for them and other organizations, the likes of Mega, where Mega are encouraging people to apply in one place for that particular, um, for those apprenticeships with those companies. So what we'd encourage you to do is first of all make, make sure you do your application through work plus for the opportunity that's linked to that manuf manufacturing degree program at um ulster university at mcgee and also apply on the on the on the university website for that to make sure that your name is is there um we, we will also be in touch with the course directors of each of these courses to let them no one keep them informed about applications coming through. So um, we'll do what we can from our side, but it's really important that you let the Ulster University know that you are interested in, in coming on that course and you can do that via their website. Great. And then the level two or level three um, apprenticeship pathway for someone who's studied GCSEs. Yes. Thanks, Lizzie, for the reminder on that one. So, uh, so Whenever we're talking about the apprenticeship levels, we are talking about the level of qualification that you will finish that apprenticeship with. So when we say level three, you need to have a level two qualification to get into a level three. So it's not that you need level three qualifications to get into the level three apprenticeship. So hopefully that's that's clear. So you'll need to, if you're doing GCSEs, that means that you will if they're A star to C, that means you'll have equivalent of level two. So therefore, you'll be applying for the, the level three apprenticeship. And if you're doing those in June this year and you're not quite sure, um, you apply and then put in your predicted grades with a 2023 uh, year on them in the uh, qualifications page. Great. And um, someone's asking for a bit of um, information, I guess, about what um, they're interested in and choosing an apprenticeship based on their subjects. Um, they've asked for the likes of engineering or cyber is it still worth applying if they haven't done these subjects in school okay so on the cyber side of things we've we've um i i don't know off the top of my head but on the on the on the job information on our site there's that apply to course section and it will tell you exactly what you need to get on to the course to the minimum criteria for that so we'd encourage you to go and, and look at that for, for a lot of roles they are prescriptive um about the types of gcse's a levels but actually more often than not they're not prescriptive because what they're looking for are people who yes can get the right grades but also they're not so specific about the subjects so make sure that you go and have a look at that particular cyber apprenticeship and go to the apply to a course section and check the eligibility criteria, then you'll get a sense of whether or not this is the right um, pathway for, for you. Great. Um, then there's a couple of questions about um, kind of getting an idea of how to best approach and apply to the different courses or companies. Um, and then someone else is asking, do you apply one time for multiple positions or do you apply individually for each one? Okay, so to answer both those questions, we're trying to make it easier for you because we we don't want you to have to repeat yourself with all that personal information, qualifications, work experience across multiple employers at different times of the year. It's just a huge distraction and really annoying for you to have to do that. So our, our job is to get more employers to join in with Work Plus so we make it easier for you. So the majority of what Lucy explained around the application is the profile element, and that's all that personal information. The good news is you just have to do that once, and then you can apply to as many apprenticeships as that are through Work Plus as you like, and you rank the companies in order of preference in there. So we've tried to provide a profile for each business so that you have a sense of the types of organizations that are hiring but as i mentioned previously you may want to go and do, go and do your own research around them but that will give you a sense of how you're going to rank those employers 
and it's really important that you do that and also to also to treat this process and treat the employers with respect in this space as well really we you know we we, we would love you to think about applying but if it's not the right time for you or you you're not sure about applying to the employers we would encourage you to to, to, to take a, a second a second thought about that because the employers want people who are really serious about coming to work for them they're going to go through a process where they're going to put a lot of time into this in terms of setting up interviews shortlisting etc so make sure that you really give it good consideration and um, whenever you come to apply and then also about how you're going to rank those employers mm -hmm. Great. Um, someone's asking, does work experience include a paid part-time job? So when we're when we're talking about apprenticeships, it's it's different from work experience. Um, so work experience is 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 something that we are involved in, but what we're talking about here are apprenticeships, which means that it's a job. So you get paid to do that job, which is typically four days a week, and then one day you go to college or university. And you are paid by your employer for that day as well. So there's the, the benefit of earning and learning at the same time, getting your qualifications, and it's but it's not work experience. This is the job with a course alongside it. Great. Um, there's another question about, um, do you have to pay the university fees for the training or is that covered? Well, this is the great news about apprenticeships is that the government sees that having people in apprenticeships is really good for everybody. It's good for, for you because you get a job with higher levels of qualification. It's good for the employer and government gets more taxes paid and that's good for them. So in answer to your question, the government pays for the fees to the college or university. So you don't have to pay them a penny, but you get all the benefits of their course and you get paid by the employer. So that's the double benefit that you get. Great. Um, someone's asking um, if, if A-level results in August fall below the threshold for university entry after the apprenticeship has been offered in March, what happens? That's a, that's a great question. Um, there are some apprenticeship areas, say, for example, software, civil engineering, where you, you'll see that the companies are coming forward and it's and on the job it's saying level five to seven or level five to six and you might think that's strange but what we're trying to do there is cater for the employers and for yourselves where you don't yet know what grades you'll get so if you if you get a certain number of UCAS points you may get onto the degree in software but if you don't get that you may have to go on to the foundation degree, which would be a level five qualification. So degree is level six, master's degree is level seven, and then below that is level five. So there are some apprenticeship pathways where there may not be a level five foundation degree to go on to. So have a look and, and make sure that you're you're familiar with, with the right levels. But um, what we try to do is group those level fives and sixes together in one application. Uh, so the employers know that you're setting your A-levels or your BTEC qualifications and you're still waiting in those grades. And it's really in the balance at that point. But fundamentally, these employers are looking for really good people. And I, you know what we've in, in, the, in the small number of cases where this has happened previously, the employers want to make it work. And there have been cases where someone hasn't gotten the right grades the employers, if they've, if they've already made you a job offer, it's because they think you're great. And it's just a case of maybe you resetting some of your exams or going on to the foundation degree. The employers will make it work. And that's what we find um, has been our experience. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, hopefully that answered as well. Another question there from, from Sharon about um, her son finishing A-levels. And um, hopefully that, that covered that as well. Um, a couple of questions about the future of apprenticeships or future apprenticeships. Um, somebody's asking about future apprenticeship opportunities in County Down um, available um, for September start, or, or is that unlikely? And as well, um, James is asking about has there been a decline in apprenticeship places um, with businesses closing down in the current market? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we've seen a growing number of, of businesses interested in, in apprenticeships. And but 
the the number of opportunities around county down for us um is we don't have as many employers in in that space however you may want to 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 talk directly with southeastern regional college and um, where you can you can access those opportunities we are working with um, some employers in the in the hillsborough area and um, idox is a software company we've also got graham construction and we have design id there as well um, but in terms of further down um uh east and south of, of that direction in the county down and um, we don't have a, a a lot of opportunities and the college may be the best place for you if they're already connected with other businesses the difficulty is that you know even if you look on indeed today or on connect to success which is the government's website there aren't a lot of apprenticeships available and um, and this is why we're doing what we're doing is to try and bring employers together we don't have all the employers just yet, but we'll work hard to try and uh, grow that employer base so there are more opportunities um, as we go to, to the next campaign in August. Great. Um, somebody is asking if they can redo the aptitude test. It's something that you can redo really once um, because it's it's about who who you are and it's also something that could be gamed as well. So if you know the types of questions, the second time you come around to do it, you will change your approach so it's something which you can only do once if you do start it and then you get wi-fi cuts out or you get distracted or something happens you need to go and do something and um, you might get timed out of it but you will get an email from not us but from preview online that's p-r-e-v-u-e and that will allow you to restart that that aptitude test where you left it off so don't worry if you do get um distracted or at uh, wi-fi cuts out great um, Anna is asking um as an apprentice do you get paid holidays or university term holidays so Anna I'm both in, in a strange way you know so, so you, you you don't go to university or college all year round but you do go to work all year round apart from the paid holidays that you get so some of the companies are offering 25 days plus the statutory so that's takes you up to 35 36 37 days depending on the company so you get all the benefits of being an employee of the company you get paid holidays you get in some cases gym membership you get um, illness coverage and and lots of other perks depending on the company but you don't have to go to college or university all year round. You get a break from that. Great. Um, someone else is asking um, if the start date for an apprenticeship is July, but I can get A-level results in August. How, how does that work? Um, sorry, let's just repeat the start of that one for me. Right. If the start date for an apprenticeship is yeah. July, but I get results for my A-levels in August, how okay. does this work? Yeah. So what we've introduced this year, rather than you just having to guess when the apprenticeship is going to start with it, each employer, we, we introduced a starting date so that you can see when the employer would really like to have you start. So what that means is, in some cases, employers will want you to come in earlier than the start date of the apprenticeship and maybe come in and work for them full time for a couple of months over the summer and then when you start your apprenticeship officially in September, so you'd be paid for that work over the summer. Now, if you are interviewed by them, they're really happy with you, but you turn around and say, I'm so sorry, but I'm going into railing for seven weeks in the summer and I can't start until the end of August. The employers would be open to negotiation around that. They might say no, <laughs> and you have to have a hard conversation with your friends and try and get your money back and your injury link. But they they may, because of the you and, and, and the candidate that you are, they may be willing to negotiate on that. So don't let that put you off, but allow it just to frame the way you approach that employer. You can say to them, like, I've noticed this, but I've got this opportunity to do X, Y, and Z in the summer. And um, would it be okay if I started with you later in August? The, you know, don't be afraid to have that conversation with the employer if they make you an offer. Great. Um, a question about work experience. Um, can any elements of work experience in the past be used to apply even if it's not relevant to the course applied? To, to come back to the point you were making earlier, let's say about the importance of all the skills that we have whether we 
you know, depending on where we pick them up, whether it's as part of a sports club and our choir, our drama group, when we're being a prefect or doing volunteer work with a kids club or whatever, the employers want to know all of this. They want to know the person that you've become as a result of all your experiences. So the fact that it's not that you were taking part in a cyber initiative in a school to, you know, to apply for a cyber apprenticeship, that, that that's interesting, but also they want to know about all the other skills that you have. So try and bring as much of yourself into that application form. And as Lucy's rightly suggested, make sure you have someone who, you know, you can, once you go through and complete the application um, before the deadline, you can print it, download it, talk to friends, talk to parents, carers about it, get someone's critical eye on it and say, does this sound like me? Does this look like me? Because I want my whole self to be part of this application. So really encourage you to bring all the skills that you have to the table. Great. Um, and then thinking about the training provider application to the, the training provider course, um, someone's asking, um, does it have to be done through UCAS? Um, and then somebody else is asked about the level three civil engineering course, and they're maybe having difficulties with that link. Okay. So firstly, the apprenticeship application is done directly with the training provider, whether that's the college or the university. So it's applying to a university through UCAS does not secure your place on the higher level apprenticeship course. So that is fundamental. You, you need to apply directly on the university or college website. Um, on that very specific issue about the level three civil engineering, we can take a look into that to make sure that we're 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 providing the right link in that space. So so we'll take that as an action after this session. Great. And then last two questions, I think. Um, someone's asking for advice if they don't meet the subject entry requirements for a, for a particular course, for example, quantity surveying. Um, and then there's another question up from Judith about plans to bring on board opportunities for apprenticeships leading to mechatronics degree, foundation, HNC, HND, um, Ulster University and CERC offer this, but she doesn't seem to find any on WorkPlus at present. Okay, okay. Um, so on the first one then, so um, what, I'll answer Judith's first actually, just around the HNC, HND. So, so there are... So there are a few companies that are that are looking for megatronics, um, but a lot of employers just like to recruit by themselves or to use the college application as the way of recruiting, and that's that's the way those employers are, are setting themselves up. So we're not replacing CERC in any shape or form. What we're trying to do is to make it easier for you to apply to multiple companies, but unfortunately, not all those companies are working with us yet. So there's a there's a you'll need to go directly to the, the colleges then on if if you're not seeing enough megatronics opportunities that are that are relevant for you um and the other one lucy sorry excuse yeah, me so it was about um advice for someone who doesn't meet the subject entry requirements for a specific yes, okay place. so yes yeah, so we put those subject entry requirements out there so you're completely it's transparent about what you need to get on to that course um so if if the employer is looking has another pathway an apprenticeship opportunity for a lower level you may want to consider it applying to that but it's it there is a minimum entry criteria from a qualification point of view for these apprenticeships so if you don't meet the the grade for that particular one you may need to look at a lower level apprenticeship to 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 be able to, to, to take part in that um so that's uh, you mentioned i think the quantity surveying one so the, the grades for that would would be higher than the construction management but that might be an option is construction management which is aligned to con quantity surveying it's not identical but it would allow you to work for the same types of organizations involved in the same sorts of projects but just in a different role which has a lower entry criteria Great. And then a final question that came through there, someone is asking um, if they have further questions, how can they contact us? Um, yeah, yes, so the best best way to do that is, is first of all, take a look at our FAQs and actually a few of the things that have been brought up this evening. Um, Lucy and I will be chatting about tomorrow about how we can probably introduce some of these questions into those FAQs. So thank you so much for your questions. The reason that 
we we have answers in all this space it's because people before you ask these questions and um you know we're, we're trying to provide a better service around this so thank you for that um, our FAQ section on our website is a great place to go. If you don't find the answer you're looking for there, then there's a chat function on the bottom left of our website. So just click on that little box and we'll get back to you um, when we can um, to answer any queries that you might have. Unfortunately, we can't offer a personalized service where we could take phone calls um, from everybody. Um, you know, we're a small team getting through a lot of work. So unfortunately, we'll not be able to offer that, but we'll we can definitely offer a chat um, facility. So please make use of that. Great. Great. Well, Lucy, thank you for guiding us through those questions and thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, it was fantastic to have you with us. We hope you find it really useful um, as you explore apprenticeships and, and hopefully make that next step to applying. Just to reinforce that the applications close on the 24th of February, that's Friday the 24th of February at 1pm and there can be no extension of that at all um, and we'd encourage you to do it today before because if the aptitude test is part of it, you'll need to do that part separately. So please, um, you've got plenty of time, I know there's a lot going on with mocks etc this week uh, if you're still at school um, but there is half term next week, we had that in mind whenever we were thinking about our dates so you've got a bit of time hopefully when you're off, take, just take a couple of hours and you'll be right through this application process and you get yourself in front of all these wonderful employers um, so thank you so much for your time um, have a great evening and we hope to see you soon take care <music>